Ahoy there, and welcome back to Dillman's Dawn. I'm Luke, he, him, sometimes they, them. I'm serving cunt, and it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. (laughs) 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 Oh. Oh. I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Janine. Uh, hi, my, um, I'm Janine, my pronouns are she, they, and after that I definitely don't have anything to say, uh, cause Luke said it all. <laughs> are you also serving content at the All You Can Eat Buffet? Uh, yeah, but like, drinks are separate. And you have like a three plate limit. <laughs> I'm serving cunt. But the carving station's extra. I'm serving cunts, but everybody's <laughs> filling up on bread. <laughs> I'm serving cunt, but no one's biting. I'm serving cunt without a license. I'm serving cunt, and he is the master of the country estate. Uh, no, I lost <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. It's a bad it. bit. This it's, bit you know was what? for nobody. Uh, it it definitely it definitely helps with the energy. Like you helps indoctrinate people, inoculate people to uh, the buffoonery we're going to get into. Oh yeah, because we are continuing on from last week's episode where we talked about One Piece and the Simpsons, or well, technically two weeks ago's episode, but time. Time, my friends, is an illusion, and it is serving cunt, but all the chafing dishes are empty, and you go circling around again and again, and there is no food there. There is only the eternal spiral until we all die, fading into nothingness. We were promised food at this buffet, but instead there is nothing. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the podcast where we talk about One Piece and The Simpsons and look at them in comparing and contrasting ways. If this is your second episode because you jumped on Claire's episode, this is what happens when we don't have to dress up nice for a guest. I'm, <laughs> I'm wearing pajama <laughs> pants and a t-shirt. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm Donald ducking it in a nightgown. Hell yeah. (laughs) Uh, All right. Uh, Taking care of business, we have some mints from the last episode where I need to eat my sins. I need to confess (laughs) them to you and hope that you will absolve them so I am not sentenced to podcasting hell. Uh, first off, I had, I kind of remembered, but then it was kind of like, oh, too late. Uh, King Atticus had suggested Jaffe for Jiro as a suggestion, but we only had one suggestion, so it was like, whatever. And then also, fuck, I used a screen cap from episode 331 for the last cover, and just nobody commented on that, and I don't think anyone is going to comment on it. But just be aware that uh, I know what I did, and it will slowly destroy my body like all the mercury from the tuna that I am eating. So should we choose a screen cap that happened between 30 to, um, what was it? In the episodes prior. Mm Mm-hmm. Should we use a no. screen cap from something like, or are we still going forward? We're still going forward, Janine. Like, if I really wanted to make up for it, I'd be like, hey, Mike, do you want to do two covers this week? But the the cover that Chris did last week, or for the last episode, is fantastic. It is amazing, and... Um, I love it. Yeah, no, it is, it is beautiful. It, it is definitely it, one that... Um, it's t-shirt worthy. <laughs> it helped me with my depression. Oh. You know, it, it, it feels good to bring some joy 
into your life. And hopefully that's what the show does for you. And I also love it when we get like a new artist getting a hand on the ball because like kind of exposing another person to uh, what we do in, in that particular way has been, um, I don't know, like very amazing just to, just to hear to, to just the ones that get it, they really get it. Mm-hmm. We are a podcast that is highly specialized, and those of you who are still here understand it. We have somehow met you at the crossroads of your interest, whether that is One Piece and The Simpsons, or me talking and Janine talking, or Janine and The Simpsons, or me and One Piece. You know, there's there's combinations. Intersectionality includes The Simpsons and One Piece. Yes. And the episodes that we are going to be covering today include episodes that initially ran between November 18th and December 23rd of the year 2007. Uh, The first episode that we have of The Simpsons was Husbands and Knives. A new comic shop opens, driving the android's dungeon out of business, and when Marge becomes concerned about her weight, she opens up a gym for women that becomes very popular. Homer starts to be concerned that he isn't enough of a trophy husband, and he gets his stomach stapled. When Marge likes it without knowing how it happened, he goes on to get more elective surgery. But then before uh, the actual surgery happens, he has a nightmare about becoming a monster due to all the surgeries, and... When he gets up, Marge has stopped him from getting the surgery, and he is restored to normal. And we don't really get a, hey, this is why the Android's dungeon is back, or Marge gave up her business, or any of that sort of stuff. I do like that it was Marge that had the weird job for a second. Mm Mm-hmm. Let Marge succeed. Yeah, and... Then kind of throw it all away just to be a housewife again. Yeah, well, and I I mean, I do like that Homer was a very supportive husband and he had the reasonable warning that, or the reasonable fear that he is not enough. And while I don't think you need to resort to surgery to make yourself how you feel another person would want you to be, uh yeah. I do like that it has definitely shown uh, a more healthier side of their marriage, especially mm-hmm. after the kind of episodes that we had the past couple of seasons. Uh, being able to see them like genuinely just be like secure in their marriage, like Homer was fine. It was the outside influences of like the other guys that got in his head, that got him in his way. Mm -hmm. Um, Because just seeing them in those moments, just completely 100% just trust and love each other. Like that's, that's kind of what what you want from a TV mom and dad. There's also a bunch of comic jokes that are in here for me. Oh yeah. It's, it is a solid episode and We also get American hero Jack Black. I think that they definitely uh, used Jack Black in a great way in that, like, he's a great voice actor. Mm -hmm. Um, If you've ever seen, like, people don't really like this movie, but I think his performance personally makes it a very personal film for me, and that is Shark Tale. The Will Smith fish movie. <laughs> I, I I laugh because when I went to college, we had alumni at my college, which no longer exists and is now, if you haven't finished paying off your student loans, you can get them forgiven. Uh, but we had a poster for Shark Tale and it's like, they really did try and make those fish look horny. <laughs> They try to give that fish titties so bad. 
Um, but, uh, you know, like I, I connected with that performance of an effeminate shark and I feel like, um, I mean, like seeing him voice act in video games and everything, like he, he gets it. He was definitely like not being Jack Black. He definitely was being that eccentric, cool guy character that ran comic book guy out of business. And by the way, that didn't get resolved. And I love that. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll ignore it. And I think it gets referenced maybe once or twice more, but uh, yeah. Comic book guy deserves to go out of business because he runs a bad business and he is a awful person. As a former comic shop employee, I feel comfortable saying that. Uh, I mean, I got I gotta say that I have been in some comic book shops where I definitely felt like that was the attitude towards me, uh, a kid that was there at the time. Like I definitely felt like this was my um, experience when I was in Alien Worlds in San Antonio, mm-hmm. um, by some of the people who played Magic in the back, and that was just kind of like. That was the first time I went to a place and I was like, awesome, this is a really cool place for nerds who don't like me. Well, I am sorry they have missed out on you because you are wonderful, my friend. Uh, you're cool and you're getting more cool. Okay, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second episode was Funeral for a Fiend, where the family gets a TiVo, which leads them into Sideshow Bob's Trap at a fake barbecue restaurant where he gets foiled again. In court, Sideshow Bob blames Bart for his crimes, and when he pulls out nitroglycerin, Bart throws it away and Bob seemingly dies because it was medicinal. At the funeral, Cecil, Bob's brother, tells Bart to make amends with Bart at, with to make amends with Bob at the funeral home. Lisa finds out about this, realizes it was all a trap uh, put on by Sideshow Bob and his family. Bob locks Bart in his coffin, but the Simpsons arrive with the police and save Bart. It's uh, you know what? It's it's. I think this was better than the Italian Bob. I think so, too. I do like that they kind of rounded up the entire Fraser cast for it. Um, yeah, I I agree with that. I love the Fraser cast. Uh, because uh, I think at, at this point, was it off the air? Uh, yeah. It's 2007, uh, right? It should be off the air by now. Comfortably by at least a couple of years. Why are you not work? Oh, okay. When did Frasier end? Yeah, three years. Ah, yeah. So this would be kind of uh, the first of a few reunions that the cast would have. And um, I think that they played their role very well. I did like that um, seeing... Bob's mother and father definitely lets you know, like, that, you know, the art decisions that were made inside of it so that uh, Bob, you could be able to see, got his the facial features of his father, but the hair of his mother, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like just, just seeing those things together and, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to, like, um, families inside of, like, Animated animation. shows, yeah, because you mm-hmm. know that it, it's just—it's it's... nice seeing family resemblance where it is actually like well done. Yeah, and and inside of like The Simpsons, where I mean, uh, the creator's initials are hidden in Homer's head. You know, like there are some abstract um, variances when it comes to, to to facial features so just seeing that little bit of extra detail put on them i mean sometimes like you'll end up seeing a simpsons character that looks like so over designed that they look like they don't belong there or uh, like there, there's things that a lot of simpsons uh people who draw your simpsons portrait get wrong 
Yeah. I mean, like, it's it's one of the reasons why we, I, I like when we do this show and we, we get the artist to, to, to draw using those kind of, you know, ideas that we have that, that stays true inside of the Simpsons DNA. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you found some really good people for that. I like to think that they found me. Uh, the third, uh, yeah, I, I really liked Funeral for a Fiend and the barbecue restaurant was a great bit. Where Sideshow Bob pretends to be Wes Dubner and it's just an overly complicated plot. Uh, the third episode is Eternal Moonshine of the Simpsons Mind. Where Homer arrives home after a night of drinking to find the family missing and Santa's little helper angry with him. Homer goes to Moe's and finds out that he had a drink to make him forget what happened previously. Chief Wiggum reveals he had been called to the house for a domestic disturbance where Marge had a black eye. Homer realizes that Flanders was the one who placed the call, but he still can't figure out what happened. So he goes to Grandpa, who sends him to a memory review facility. And in his flashbacks, Homer walks in on Marge with another man. Duffman! <laughs> Homer debates suicide when Patty and Selma meet him, and they end up pushing him off a bridge. As his life flashes before his eyes, Homer realizes Marge was planning on a surprise party for him with Duffman! And he falls into that party where he was reminded that he drank to forget about the party so he could be surprised. I love this episode. I love this episode so much. I mean, it, it... The, the, the scene transitions with the fucking moths or whatever. Mm-hmm. The fucking... Um, the characters that were involved with it were so specific and perfect in like what they were thrown into. Uh, Homer's idealized versions of Lisa being smarter than him. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the fucking... Time bubble. The fucking um, Ice Age score oh, at the beginning. You're talking about Scrap? Yes, let's talk about Scrap because um, Scrap is canon now inside of the Simpsons universe. And, and like, like actual Scrap. I mean, actual Scrap lived during the Ice Age. This is just a squirrel that heavily resembles Scrap. Do we know? Do we know? I mean, like, he got frozen in time, you know? Fucking, maybe Super Soldier Serum uh, kept him alive all this time. Well, speaking of Scrat, we have a lot of other characters who we can now use, including Alan Moore, Art Spiegelman, (laughs) Dan Klaus, Captain Haddock, Stinky, Storm, Stretch, Black Robin, Caveman Robin, Born Again Robin, Surgery Monster Homer, Grover, Talking Frog, Jesus Christ Criminal, Snow Kool-Aid Man, and Mold Lizard, amongst many more. Yeah, overall, these episodes were solid, I think. Eternal Moonshine had the least laughs, but it tried to do something interesting with the script, and it pulled it off. I, you know me, I hate to be the person who, like, constantly talks about how bad modern Simpsons is. Or technically, if I'm going to be representing 70% of Facebook fans... Oi, I don't like how bad 70% of Simpsons is nowadays in modern episodes. You won't Ooh, get our dollary dues. Dollary dues, koala. <laughs> I think it's a chicken burger. The Australians say that a fried chicken sandwich is a chicken burger. And it's just such a weird take. And they try and be like, yeah, anything that you put on a bun, you would you call a burger, and anything that's on like flat, like normal bread slices is a sandwich. 
But if you put a hamburger patty on a, on like between two pieces of white bread, you know what that is, Janine? What's that? That's my dad realized that he had no buns and we're just having burgers for dinner. That happened a few times. <laughs> it's not the same thing, Dad. <laughs> it's like when you said, oh, we're going to get KFC and you just pick up the chicken, but you don't get the sides. It's not the same thing, Dad. If We have to go and like cook the wild long grain rice. It's not the same thing. If we have to like actually cook the green beans. It's not the same thing. <sighs> it's not, Janine. It's not. Uh, I keep telling him. Mm -hmm. Thank you for regularly calling up my dad. <laughs> In Soviet Russia, you build the psychologist. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, we have episodes of One Piece to talk about. And those are episodes 331 through 336. These include High Full Throttle, The Twins Magnetic Power Draws Near, The Great Chaos Mansion, The Angry Dawn and the Imprisoned Crew, The Phoenix Who Returns, The Dream of the Pirate Flag Sworn to a Friend, The Super Final Atsu Atsu Battle. Luffy versus the Scorching Dawn. We're heating in the new world. Farewell to the courageous pirates. Champaman departs. Protect the TV station by the shore. So I felt bad last week that I did what I think was a bad job on the summary. So. I went back and specifically rewrote everything for this week's episode. Cause, um, I'm technically paying to do the show and y'all aren't paying me enough to <laughs> rewatch <laughs> these episodes. Oh. So, the Straw Hats and the Phoenix Pirates continue to face off against the Chino family in Lovely Land with most of the crew getting captured and brought back to Lovely Land where they are thrown inside a large freezer pit. Campuchino, Brindo's twin brother, comes after the Phoenix Pirates and they reveal that they have magnetic powers just because they're twins. I guess? Yeah, it. I, uh, I appreciate that they hang a lampshade on it. I think that... Um... I stopped thinking about citizens of this world as humans in any capacity that is the same as humans like you and I, and it's just kind of cartoon logic. It's mm -hmm. just, it just makes it easier. Of course they can be able to do shit like that because they're twins. Twins are magic, I guess. I'll accept it. It's not even devil fruit powers. Mm -hmm. Twins! Uh, so Luffy faces them and eventually uses the Gum Gum Gatling to defeat them, and so Luffy, Chopper, and the rest of the Phoenix Pirates head to Lovely Land. Meanwhile, Zoro, who got lost, wandered into Lovely Land by himself where he met Donna Chino. <laughs> and <laughs> something's brewing at Gum Gum's <laughs> Dawn. Wow, Al Pacino? It's not Al anymore. It's Don. <laughs> Donna Chino? Don't mind if I do. What's my name? <laughs> huh? Who? This well mannered snake? Should have timed that better, but yeah, yeah. I think I think you stuck the landing. Um, Thank you. Still can't believe you made that. Like in what twenty minutes? Maybe less. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do eventually just start swearing. <laughs> I. I. Oh yeah, Don Chino in the house. He's noting everything down, and Buggy is another pirate who looks like a clown. I I was tired. Um, yeah, it's it's a dumb bit, but you know I I commit to the bits. 
says Luke on the 54th episode of a <laughs> One Piece and Simpsons podcast that nobody asked for. <laughs> oh, oh. I did not think that we would be doing it for this long, but I knew mm-hmm. I knew that I wanted to as as far as we can take it and and Wow. 54 episodes already. Mhm. It it I mean it it just still feels amazes like... me that it's any number above 5. Yeah, but when you start a project with me if you keep showing up I will keep showing up and you're stuck. Yeah, we're we're at an impasse because I'm going to keep on showing up for this and that means that you got to you got to keep on watching it too. Hey, it's fine. I enjoy One Piece. So, but uh, yeah, is- Zoro <laughs> eh, I enjoy some Simpsons. But I'm we're, we're developing a refined Simpsons palette. <laughs> yes, this uh, season 16 smacks of a season 12 with the absurdity, but you find a solid plot. I feel like I have said some bullshit like that. When Abby and I were watching the most recent episode where that featured Kyle Gordon and my... <sighs> My wonderful wife has not seen Planet of the Base and did not believe that it was a meme. And, like, the whole Planet of the Base sequence that they had was not good, but uh, we we both have been commenting that, like, the first act of the episode was actually well-written and well-paced, and then the rest of it just went off the rails in a bad story way. Hmm. Because the whole idea was Homer gets stressed out by tipping and then he accidentally writes a tip for a thousand dollars that makes him famous for the tip even though he can't afford it and it's like okay that's like that's a solid thing like he's too afraid of the reaction if he takes back the tip or it's a ten thousand dollar tip it's a ten thousand dollar tip and so he instead becomes addicted to tipping. He somehow gets the money to continue ridiculously tipping. And then when he realizes that everyone is kind of, that his family is angry at him with for tipping and everyone else wants him to keep giving him money, he goes to little Europe where they don't tip. And he hides out there away from his family and everyone else. And then at the end, he tries to give a speech saying that we should pay everyone livable wages so no one has to tip, which is true. And he just gets booed down by all the people who enjoy getting tips. And it's like, no, you you, you lost the plot there. It went from, oh, Homer has a reasonable, like, social problem to, uh, no, he is somehow just burning massive amounts of money. And it. No one gets horny for tipping. Like, there's a full-on orgasm scene that he has with Mo when he tips Mo. Mo doesn't deserve that. I mean, no. Mo deserves very, very little and should not be given a, a lot of, like, praise, but he doesn't deserve abuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was just one of those things where it's like, this isn't good. Uh, as usual, I, I don't think I've actually said it enough on the show. The Great North continues to be the best show on the Fox Sunday Night lineup. And uh, y'all should check it out. The first season's a bit slow, but you kind of have to adjust to what the show is. And uh, it is a delight. And it balances story much better. And every episode ends with a little song. Oh, I love songs. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, Jane Lynch plays Aunt Dirt, a lesbian who lived in the bunker for the last 50 or so years. You already got me at Jane Lynch, to be yeah. honest. Oh, no, the entire cast is great because it stars Nick Offerman.
Like I enjoy Nick. I guess I enjoy Nick Offerman, but you don't. <laughs> I enjoy Nick Offerman in a different way than I enjoy Jay Lynch. I mean, Alanis Morissette is sometimes in it. Oh, isn't that ironic? Uh, anyways, uh, Zoro wanders into lovely land, shares a drink with Adana Chino, and then when he sees the straw hat flag is captured, he gets captured himself. Uh, Donna Chino reveals that he has the hot, hot fruit, and when Zoro tries to fight him, he destroys a flag, which makes, uh, Donna Chino, which makes Donna Chino angry and puts him at a, er, and puts him in danger of melting all of Lovely Land. Lil, the youngest daughter of the Achino family, checks in on the pirates. Robin asks her for cola, which allows Frankie to get the rest of the pirates out of their icy prison. And then upon escaping, they realize they need to get their flag back before Luffy finds out that they lost it. So Usopp, Sanji, Frankie, Nami go outside to help everyone while Robin goes after the flag. And Usopp runs into Luffy and lies, saying that Luffy has to defeat everyone for the doors to open, which is some great video game bullshit. <laughs> and as the Straw Hats start winning against the Achino family, Don Achino comes out and starts messing around first with Luffy having fun before they get serious. Like Luffy and Don Achino just having fun sliding around is wholesome and fun. The uh, penguins that work for the Achino family try and steal the Phoenix pirate ship, but the pirates work together to save it before Frankie chases the penguins off with the shark sub. Robin, meanwhile, gets captured by Lil in the greenhouse, but when Sanji and Usopp come in to save her, Lil sees that Robin's friends care for her and let them go. The rest of the crew then heads to the flag room to save their flag. The room gets destroyed with all the flags going up into the air. Luffy, meanwhile, turns on second gear to fight Don Achino, who starts opening up magma pits, and Lil returns the Straw Hat's flag to them. With Nami's help, Luffy is able to resist Don Achino's heat and knocks him out while the rest of the crew works to get Usopp back to the ship to return the flag. And then the Phoenix Pirates with their wills restored and their flag back. And with lovely land destroyed, sail off and promise to meet the Straw Hats again in the New World. It's... They don't, do they? No, they don't matter. Uh, none of <laughs> None of their crew has any valuable powers like their their coolest member died i i mean i guess uh puzzle with the chains is pretty good but yeah like they couldn't even use a secondary devil fruit on these guys none of them have like really distinctive designs <sighs> i'm glad they're dead <laughs> one big ace in the hole uh and then we have a good episode which is chopper man where uh if you forgot who chopper man is uh it's chopper's superhero identity alternate universe uh dr uso dabada feels disrespected by his henchmen who are more interested in watching the tv so he takes over the tv station to call on new mut uh to call on new minions Meanwhile, without crime to fight, Namifa and Chopperman are low on cash, but they see uh, Uso Dabada on TV trying to get minions as he is running a phone bank and just hosting a really weird bunch of shows. And uh, Dr. Uso Dabada offers a toy plane to try and get people to work for him, and Chopperman wants the toy plane, so he shows up to work for him. And Dr. Uso Dabada offers that if he takes the fall in a wrestling match chopper man will get the toy and as the match goes on uh with him winning uh he starts to get minions recruited but then he refuses to give chopper man the toy so chopper man tags in minoru casino to wrestle and uso dabada then calls in the giant robot frangashan and namifa summons the giant luffy bomber and chopper man is able to win the fight and namifa decides to monetize their fan base with a fan club uh yeah so i tried to hide uh minoru casino from you <laughs> uh i'm i'm glad that i i didn't 
uh, that I was able to know beforehand, though, um, because Minoru Suzuki has actually been visiting the golden One Piece statues uh, this week and uh, just posted earlier today, or I guess it would be yesterday. How does time work for Japan? Um, but I, he was with the Chopper statue. So how, how amazing is it that we're talking about Minoru Suzuki in One Piece while he's seeing One Piece characters in real life? I think that's mm-hmm. kind of like a little funny thing of the universe. Also, when uh, Chopper does tag him in, Chopper does say uh, the name of the song and the one line that everybody repeats, and that is Kaze ni nare. And that, Be the wind. Yes. Um, Which, if you go back to the end of the last episode, I say, Be the wind. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I saw Minoru Suzuki live last month. Uh, he was he was a surprise entrance in um, in a fight against um, Bullet Club Gold for the um, which ones they have ROH yes the, for the Ring of Honor six man tag team um, championship. It was. Um, it was Lance Archer, Alex Zane, as as their tag team monster sauce, and they introduced um, Minoru Suzuki. And when his music hit, and when he walked out, everybody just flipped because nobody knew he was coming to Philadelphia. Everybody knew every single wrestler that was going to be on every single card, and none none of them had Minoru Suzuki, and he just fucking shows up, and. Um, I, I've I've got to sing um, Kaze ni Nare because in his entrance, right before he enters the ropes, um, he times it so that his entrance song, as it hits Kaze ni Nare, everybody sings it all together. And being a part of a crowd when that happens, that's really awesome and to know that like that tradition was kept in one piece where he does not go into the ring until he hears chopper say kaze ni nare and it's just so fucking awesome uh also hell yeah for chopper for not putting uh usabada over after finding out that you weren't going to get paid wrestlers get fucked out of paychecks a lot of times in the pro wrestling business. So, you know, if you're not going to get the money, don't put anybody over. Start stealing shit if you have to. The Uso Davida screw job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we got uh we got some wrestling in. And Janine almost got to be surprised. Teamwork. It makes the dream work. And dream work make Shark Tale. (laughs) (laughs) It's all a circle, you see. We just need to get back to serving content. It's all a squared circle. Just like in wrestling. That's true. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right so we have three characters that we have for uh matching so are you ready janine i i am yes all right well then let's be uh, the wind i am going to share my oh yeah i already had copied that into discord for you so, uh, up first, we have Shorts, who is the announcer in the Chopperman section. And I had three suggestions. My Rodrigo style is Strawberry, who is the girlfriend of Milo. 
Gosh, uh, she's so cute. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a good nerd look. Uh, we then have our throwback. I decided. Oh, hey, we have Britney Spears. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Uh, and then the other one that I put up was uh, Cienega, who was the replacement uh, reporter. Though I think we should save that because there's going to be another opportunity to use her. And I just remembered. So, Janine, who do you have for Chopin or shorts? I, I have, I only have one choice, um, mm-hmm. and it is Chloe Talbot. Um, I think it's Marge's old friend who became a very respected news reporter. I love her character. I love her character design. I don't see myself putting her in a position anywhere else that would be uh, just appropriate on this Christian podcast. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm, I'm glad that she said that because it reminds me of one of my favorite, um, One of my favorite punchlines from uh, from the last episode that we watched, Um, that was Ned Flanders saying, um, as a Christian, I assume the worst. Mm -hmm. It was just done in such a way that it was just kind of like, of course, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely a solid bit. Um... You know what? I'm I'm going to use Chloe Talbot here. Nice, nice. Uh, we then have Minoru Casino, and we had some listener suggestions. We'll start off with those first. Pere, 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 pere. Pere, pere, pere. Uh, friend of the show, future guest, and previous guest who both of us kind of messed up on. That episode, uh, Sammy suggested Malloy, the old cat burglar, uh, and King Atticus suggested either the formidable Mulk or Dr. Bonebreak. Janine, who do you have? I I have several for this one. Um, uh, how many is several? Do I need to make more columns? Four. I need to add two more columns. Okay, who you got, boss? Okay, so... I need you to understand that Minoru Suzuki Mm -hmm. has a nickname among the American fans, among the IWC, or international wrestling community, depending on who you ask. Um, And that is uh, Murder Grandpa. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. because of that, my first choice is Abe Simpson, the grandpa, who who is responsible for a few people's debt. For sure. And we haven't gotten there yet, but was also previously a wrestler. Uh, I also have Fidel Castro, friend of the show. You know, you know, I I heard he's uh, trying to, like, do some new things. Uh, He's getting into music. He's doing a lot of decomposing. Uh, speaking of decomposing, my next one is Grave Digger Billy. Beautiful. And finally, a Rodrigo choice, Alan Moore. <laughs> uh, so, Janine. Yes. We did use Grave Digger Billy. Ah. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, the three choices that I had were uh, Rodrigo style the mouse <laughs> uh, the throwback was Oscar de la Hoya because I figured hey he also is in a uh, combat sport 
And then the other one that I had was uh, Professor Werner von Braun. Ah. Uh, my my qualm with using Alan Moore, because I would love to use Alan Moore, is that I think we are going to have better opportunities for Mr. Alan Moore. Then give, and well give me Abe Simpson. You know what? I'm I'm feeling good tonight. I'll give you Abe Simpson. I will give you <laughs> full on, full ass Abraham Simpson. Hell yes. President of the uh, Gay and Lesbian Alliance, Abe Simpson. <laughs> Trans icon, Abe Simpson. <laughs> Communist, Abe Simpson. If, if when you see the kind of things that Minoru Suzuki does, uh, both in very scary shoot style wrestling and fucking um, cute and adorable things. Mm -hmm. uh, man. He's 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 perfect. You know, the first time I saw him live was in Dallas, uh, in Joey Janela's Spring Break Six, I believe it was, and he was fighting against Effie, and I saw Effie kiss Minoru Suzuki, and uh, that that was probably one of my favorite spots of that entire year. Nice. Wrestling should be more kissing. And Dallas is where JFK was assassinated. <laughs> uh, we then have Giant Robot Frangashan, which is uh, Frankie as a giant robot. And... Pere, 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 pere. Uh, that one welder guy suggested the one of the scratchy robots from Itchy and Scratchy Land. King Atticus suggested Dim Willy, which is a Hamburglar type, or a, sorry, a Mayor McCheese type character. My suggestions were Rodrigo style Clippy's son. <laughs> My throwback was G.I. Joe Skinner from when Skinner gets turned into a G.I. Joe trying to follow the, oh yeah, this is the closest that Skinner has been turned into a robot as far as I can tell. Uh, and then the other suggestions I had were Kit, the uh, car, the Knight Rider car. Yeah. And then uh, Skinner when he was a non-giving-up school guy. Huh. When he follows Bart, like some non-giving-up school guy. Who do you have? I have... Killy the Detractor. Killy the Tractor? Yes, from the, the Heck House episode of <clears throat> the... Um... Treehouse of Horror, the previous one. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, finally, I, I might have used it. Um, I hope I didn't so that I could use it here. Uh, either way, I get to say it out loud. Kill Hamid I.E. <laughs> Uh, Killer Krusty Doll, Zoro Killer. Uh, no, we have not used Kill Hamid I.E. Good. Then I would really like to push towards Kill Hamid I.E. for being both a hilarious name and a fucking huge robot that destroys. And also was thwarted by a buffoon. <laughs> Uh, so, Janine, yes. I, I feel like I've been very generous. <laughs> You're looking at the board now, aren't you? Yeah. You're realizing that you haven't yeah. put so much on there, and you're feeling like you might uh, really want to push towards the Skinner variant? No. Mm. You're wrong. Because both of those Skinners have other opportunities to be used, Janine. <laughs> 
No, I'm saying that we should go and give the fans a bone, especially because next episode is going to have a lot of characters. We go with the scratchy robot, suggested by that one welder guy. Hmm. Because they have a similar energy, similarly are disposed, and uh, Blue? also both have spikes. Spiky heads. Uh, all right, fans, you get this one. But just know that you'll see Kilhamid Ai in the future again. And just remember, I'm the one fighting for you. Call my law office and you've got a tiger on your side. And then on the other side, you've got a wolf. And sometimes they kind of like glance at each other. It's, it, it's a passing glance. But you know, they've, they've had enough wine. And I don't think anyone's going to judge them fantasize about what they could do if they just let all of their inhibitions fall to the side. They're gonna fuck. <laughs> Got him! All right, uh, that wraps us up for this week, Janine. If people want to know more about wrestling from another podcast that you do that doesn't feature my mostly cis ass, where can people find you? Uh, you can be able to find me talking about wrestling uh, with beautiful artist Flighty Buttless on my podcast, Wrestle Girlies. Um, We just did an episode where we assigned wrestlers personas, and I should be starting another a mini series where I interview uh, transgender wrestling fans and uh, talk about the state of wrestling through the lens of being a fan who is transgender. Um, other than that, you'll be able to find me online, uh, Janine Juliet on Twitter and Blue Sky. Uh, Janine is dope on Instagram and uh, maybe something else. I don't know. I'm I, I'm very touch and go with like a lot of different stuff. I'm very touch and go with Blue Sky too. Like I'm I'm testing it out, but I I don't know how I feel. How do y'all feel about it? Like you don't need invite codes. Are you are you signing up for that? Let Luke know. I enjoy Blue Sky. Is that where they can find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me at coltreg.bluesky or whatever it is. Uh, you can also go to myitch.io and see comics that I've written. Uh, and most of them you can get for free. Or like if you bought the, uh, I think it was the Palestinian Relief Bundle that came out last year. Uh, you have a bunch of stuff that I've written already. Like you should go read comics that I've written. Because uh, I've got more stuff coming out and I want people to read stuff that I do. Um, but yeah, otherwise, this is the main project that I do. Uh, also at the, usually the first Tuesday of every month, uh, I run a weird Exiles, Exiled-inspired uh, One Piece podcast with a bunch of other people. And I would normally link to that on our Discord. The artist this week is Mike Patton, who you can find most places at Patton Pending, P-A-T-T-E-N-P-E-N-D-I-N-G. Uh, he is also available to draw stuff for you, so if you're cool and have money, and yeah, uh, you should you should give him money. And, uh, yeah, this is Domance Dawn. We update every other week. Next episode, we're getting spooky. But until then, you can find us on DomanceDawn.com or at Domance Dawn on Blue Sky. We also have a Facebook page, but I am bad about updating that. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's most of it. Um, next episode, 
It's going to be spooky. We should have a special guest, and uh, we get a One Piece character who has canonically smoked a joint. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Hold on to your dookie. It's about to get spooky. Be the wind. <laughs>